Today we're going to take a look at setting up invoice elements and how those values can affect stock valuation when you receive the product. Adding invoice elements, typically you would put it like the footer on a purchase order. Let's say you have freight charges for $100, you would set up invoice elements. And the initial setup is done under setup. You can do it for sales orders or you can do it for purchase orders. We're going to take a look at purchasing today. And we're going to focus on this one. I already have this set up, an invoice element for freight and energy charges. It has to be active to be in use. <clears throat> it can be set up to be percent or amount, meaning I can enter dollar amount or a percent on the entire order of all the value lines, unless I have it set up to be an order line type element. In this case, it's an order footer type element. If it was an order line type element, then all these values would be uniquely entered on a line by line basis versus on the footer. Whether the amount's going to increase or decrease, the value of the stock, um, line distribution, this determines if you're using an invoice footer, let's say of $100, I, can I have to distribute that $100 amongst what I'm ordering on all the lines. So that distribution can be none can be based on quantity, based on amount, based on weight or volume. I have it based on amount. So that will divvy it up based on dollars, the proportional dollars and cents of each line item versus quantity. And whether it actually goes into stock valuation when my receipt comes in. If it's not going to be valued in stock, then it'll get written off to an expense account um, based on this accounting code. All right, and the tax calculation if I distribute the amounts back to the lines, then I can use the tax rule for the line for that amount or basically a fixed rate based on what I define here. And um, invoice analytical dimensions you can set up here. So that being said, we're all set up. Let's take a look at an order. So I have a purchase order here. And what I want to do is take a look at my invoice elements. So if I run through the tab here, my management tab, my lines, my total, here's the invoice element. So it's saying $140, okay? So if I look at my cost tab, you see I have that. This is the line amount, that's the invoice element, $140, and that should be my total. So when this comes into stock, it's, it should be based on the 353 and not the 213. So once I've done a receipt, in this case, um, if I look at the management here, um, the item is received. Okay, you see, oh, excuse me, it is not received. If I look at here, this item is not received or closed. So let me try and find one that is received. So I found an example here to where we, I have a purchase order that had no line invoice elements, but the receipt, they were added to it. So on the purchase order, this line here, my purchase cost is $7.03 per stock unit, or a total of $351.50 for the line. Okay, and it's saying my stock cost is going to be the same because I have no invoice elements on the PO. But the same item, when I receive it, okay, I have invoice elements. So you see I added an invoice element on the receipt. Could have done it on the purchase and it would have flowed through. But in this case, we just added it on the receipt. So now if I look at my line, and I see my line amount. The net price is $351.50, the same as it is here on this order. But now I've got my purchase cost and stock cost has changed, has increased by seven, excuse me, by the invoice element amount that was distributed for this line. Now, if I want to see a little bit more detail, I can go to line cost. And I will see here that here's my original 175.75 per order unit. There was two units, so it doubles to 351.50, which was my original PO line total. Then I have 
this freight and energy cost, $5.76 that was distributed. Okay, and here's just another view of a similar thing, the $5.76. So my invoice element was $65 and based on the quantity distribution as I have it set up, or I think it, this one is by dollar, that's the amount that was put into this product and that's actually what goes into stock.